Here are three very clear signs that you are taking too much long-acting insulin. Obviously, I'm not your doctor, so if you do think you're taking too much, talk to your healthcare team about lowering your dose. The first sign, your blood sugar is dropping when you exercise, even if you don't have an injection of rapid-acting insulin in your system. That means that it's been at least four hours since you last took rapid-acting insulin for a meal or to correct a high blood sugar. That means the only insulin that's really active in your bloodstream at the time of your exercise is your long acting dose. Now your long acting insulin dose should be fine tuned so that you don't go low just because you're exercising. If your blood sugar is dropping during exercise and this is the only insulin in your system, Lantus, Basaglar, Traceba, Tujeo, Levomir, any long acting insulin, it means you're getting too much. You should be able to go for a walk or even a jog and your blood sugar should not drop if you only have long acting insulin active in your system during that exercise. This is called fasted exercise. I explain everything you need to know about keeping your blood sugar up during exercise in this book. Find it on Amazon. And that could be confusing because you're thinking, well, I take my long acting insulin at 10 p.m. before bed, but my blood sugar is dropping during my 1 p.m. dog walk. It doesn't matter, that's your dose, right? We only have so much we can adjust because long-acting insulin is taken either once or twice a day, but you're getting too much. That might be the dose you need for other parts of the day to prevent highs, but if you're going low during exercise, you're getting too much in that dose. Well, then what happens if you lower that dose just so you don't go low during exercise, that means you could be high other times of day. Yes, it does mean that, which means then you would compensate by taking smaller little doses of rapid acting insulin. If I lower my long acting insulin to 10 units, I know that I'm not gonna go low during exercise, but I know my blood sugar is very likely going to start rising around 8 or 9 a.m. So to deal with that 8 or 9 a.m. rise in my blood sugar, I take a tiny dose of rapid acting insulin. This allows me to keep my long acting dose low enough so that I don't go low during exercise, but it helps me prevent the highs at other times of day when I might need a little bit more on board. If your blood sugar is plummeting just from vacuuming the house, you have too much insulin on board. The second sign that you're taking too much long acting insulin, your blood sugar is plummeting between every meal. Now, if you don't take rapid acting insulin and your blood sugar is dropping between meals, this is a very, very clear sign that you're taking too much insulin. If you also take mealtime insulin, of course, it could be the result of taking too much mealtime insulin. So this one can be a little tricky to figure out. But if it seems like you're trying to cut back your mealtime insulin dose and you're still going low between meals, you're on too much long-acting insulin. Mealtime insulin and long-acting insulin are a funny balance. Sometimes you can lower your long-acting insulin dose, but then that means you'll need more with meals or sometimes the reverse. Sometimes you might need more long-acting insulin and less with meals. It is a funny, tricky, very tedious balance. The dose you were given when you were diagnosed with diabetes, when you were prescribed insulin for the first time, was an estimate. You've got to keep adjusting and fine-tuning. And just because the dose that you're taking today did work for you three months ago, doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you for the rest of your life. You have to keep making adjustments. There are so many little factors that can easily affect your body's sensitivity to insulin. And those factors can be even momentary. They can last a week and then you go back. Menstrual cycles, stress, an injury, eating a lot more calories because it's a holiday week or you're on vacation. Little changes in your life can call for little changes in your insulin doses. Remember, your body is supposed to do this for you naturally, like effortlessly, automatically. So we have to work extra hard using the data, our blood sugar and our doses. That's what we can control. That's where we can make adjustments. The third sign that you're taking too much long-acting insulin, 
You treat the low and the low does not get better. I know I'm taking too much long acting insulin. When my blood sugar drops, just kind of drifts down below 70 around 3 a.m. And I treat it with three or four Mike and Ike, which are like giant jelly beans. And an hour later, I get an alert again saying, hey, you're still low. That's how I know I'm on too much long acting insulin. For me, it's just a 10% adjustment that makes all the difference. The more insulin you're on, the more of an adjustment you'll likely need. I know that I can go up to 11 units of long acting insulin and I'll have no trouble keeping my blood sugar down. And there are times during every month or even just phases of my life, right? If I was on vacation, I'm eating more calories, then I need 11 units. But then I'm back from vacation, a few days in, I'm back to my normal eating habits and exercise routine and I notice that my blood sugars are trending a little low. So then I need to lower my long acting insulin dose back to 10 units. For me, that 3 a.m. time, that's the real sign that helps me figure out if I'm taking too much insulin. Some long acting insulin peaks about five hours after injection, and it's just a subtle peak. So the more sensitive you are to insulin, the more you'll notice this peak. If I'm going low at 3 a.m., I know it's time to go back down to 10 or even nine units of insulin, depending on you know what's going on in my life. Don't just suffer and endure lows after lows after lows. Make adjustments, work with your healthcare team if you need to, and make careful, thoughtful, small adjustments until you're not going low every day. Low blood sugars should not be a regular part of your life with diabetes and insulin. Low blood sugars are a sign that you are taking too much insulin. Now we could spend forever trying to figure out why things changed, why the dose that worked for you last month isn't working for you today. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that your body is saying, hey, I don't need this much insulin. Please reduce your dose. Learn more about adjusting your own insulin doses in these books. Find them in the show notes down below.